previously recorded in, in John 3, 36. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life. For God's wrath remains on him. Let's pray together, please. Heavenly Father, we want to come before you, and Lord, we do need to see life in the Son. Lord, we want to be forgiven, and we want to have our lives uh, live upright. And so, Lord, anyone who doesn't have that this morning, we pray that you would not let them leave without us sharing the gospel with them. Be with Pastor as he talks to us about the Son and the life in him, the Son. So, Lord, for all that's done and said here, you have honor and glory. Be our special guest this morning. Yes. Amen. 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 Our first song, number 687. There are promises in the Bible. 687. Standing on the promises.
just one page. 441. I pushed it. <laughs> well, they didn't need to hear me anyway. <laughs> okay, number 441 is our reading. A living hope. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth.
you know, the kids paid attention a little bit. <laughs> we, did, we didn't learn a lot, but we did pay attention, and, uh, and that's what I, the one thing I remember about Mother's Day. So we'll be honoring our mothers that morning. On Saturday, May 27th, will be the next breakfast. So something to look forward to. And I think that's going to be all. Okay, nobody said anything yet, so we'll move on with our service here. All right, uh, let's change the song. It says number 440, but I believe it's 442. 442. Blessed Assurance. 442. <laughs> Seven or eight weeks ago, and she's still trying to heal from that. 
and she's going to a wound clinic. And uh, so let's remember Mike's mother, Audrey, and you know, we mentioned just a little bit ago, she's got a, a little splint on her uh, hook there. <laughs> she's, got a, she's got that. So let's remember her for continued healing. She said she might even take her own stitches out. I can't imagine doing that, but she's tough. <laughs> so, but let's remember her for continued recovery. Uh, Jim, Dan, Jim, and Cindy's uh, son Jimmy was diagnosed with MS. Now, that is a, a devastating disease, but there's also some treatments. So let's let's remember Jimmy this morning. The Lord can touch him. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tribley's granddaughter, Alyssa has some red tape to get through. She needs some work done on her teeth and whatever. And uh, one thing after another has to take place before they allow her to get that. So let's remember uh, Alyssa and all that red tape that she's trying to cut through there. Uh, Marcy is on our prayer list this morning for continued healing. Anything else you want to say there? No. Okay. Report. Okay. Uh, we were asked to continue to pray for Dwayne as he's recovering, and and uh, let's see, this was also, now this was Roger and Judy, this Judy brought this, Bobby, that was a girlfriend's husband, elderly man needs prayer. I don't really want to elaborate on that. Just several issues he's fighting, he's been in the hospital two weeks now, and still... Okay, been in the hospital a couple weeks and still fighting one issue to the next, it seems. So let's remember Bobby this morning. <clears throat> it was also brought up that our, our nation, the leaders, our former leaders, all uh, needs God's power to help them and guide them. Uh, our nation needs prayer desperately. Yes. Anyone else need to be on this list this morning? Roger. If I could get my buddy Rusty over there to give us an update on Mary. On Mary? Okay, she, she good job. She's sore this week. We 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 walk. We take a little walk each day. Use it down the pond, go get the mill and stuff. And you know my driveway is a it's a fair walk for old people, you know. <laughs> but anyhow, we are coming back from getting the mill, and here comes Mary walking down with her walk to the pond, and she we got a little swing there. She sat there and rested, and I'm, and she took off before us, but. Before she got to the house, she looked like she could just pass out. She mm -hmm. overdid herself. I told her, sit on your walker and uh, get some rest. No, I, I get I, Well, long story short, she never she fell going inside the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, she just gave out or whatever. And it's, it's not, she's not easy to get up because you go lift her up, and especially when you got one arm. Uh, she's she's dead weight because you don't don't really try to help you know but uh, we got her up and stuff and she's been just sore and hurting for since that happened I think it's Friday wasn't it and uh, so she's she's having a rough go of it and so she gives some prayers to them. Okay, for those of you on the internet or out in the parking lot, uh, Mary. Uh, was trying to do some exercise the other day, walking, and uh, basically had a fall. And uh, Rusty, with his recovering from surgery on his shoulder, had a hard time getting her up. And so that situation, Mary is, is not a young lady anymore. So let's remember Mary, and let's remember Rusty for continued healing. Yeah. Uh, unspoken by uplifted hand. The Lord knows all about all our unspoken requests. So our... Prayer song this morning is number 256. 256, because he lives, we'll sing the first verse and close. 256.
Great day in the Lord. Let's, uh, let's bow our heads for our prayer this, this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we gave, give you praise this morning for the answers to prayer. I had, we had a couple different people approach me this morning and say, that's a praise. And I, we give you praise for, for everything that you do for us in answers to prayer. The blessings that you've given us, Lord, the blessings of salvation itself yes. and sending your Son to die on the cross for us as we observed all week this week and especially last week on Sunday, the risen Christ. Lord, we thank you for that in a special way this morning. Lord, as we went to our Sunday school, we had quite a list of, of people for healing, and so, Lord, we're going to pray for again today for all of those on our Sunday school prayer list. And, and Lord, the petitions to bring before you this morning, we pray for uh, Aunt Faye and his family this morning, and for Christy, and uh, Lord, a uh, healing for, for Roxanne. And then, Lord, we, we think of the Cole family, the whole bunch, Lord, uh, and Bob's not doing very well. So we lift him up in particular, along with Beth and Mike and Janet and uh, Mike's mom this morning. We pray for Audrey as well for continued healing for the rest there and for Dick and Art and the rest of their family, Lord. We lift up uh, Jimmy this morning that has uh, been told that he has a form of an ass. And so, Lord, we pray for the healing process. Lord, a miracle, and uh, Lord, if there are medication, and we just pray for the nurses to have wisdom and the doctors' wisdom in that healing. And then we think of Alyssa and the, the red tape that they go through to get dental work done. We pray that you would help to work that out and make that happen. We're thankful for the praise from Margie this morning about Marcy. Lord, we thank you for the prayer request that comes up uh, from Rhonda for Dwayne, and we lift him up in prayer this morning, and Bobby in the hospital. And then we miss Mary when she's not here. Lord, we just pray to give her strength and courage. Pray for Michelle from Joyce's family there, Lord, looking for putting in for another job. And we pray that that will be taken care of, Lord, this morning. And, and we pray for our nation and the unspoken request that we have this morning and for Guy and Debbie is and different uh, traveling things. We pray for those that will be traveling. And then, Lord, as we think of, we went Tuesday night to pray with the other churches for our na nation and our leaders. Lord, we want to remember our nation in our prayers this morning and all the various leaders of the states and, and representatives and uh, Lord, those that represent us, Lord, and we just pray for each one that is in some kind of responsibility there, Lord, that they will pray before they make decisions, and Lord, uh, bring them back into their thought process. And we, we are a Christian nation. I saw the other day we're uh, still on the back of a car, Lord, uh, uh, that we, in God we trust. And Lord, we keep that promise on there. Lord, we just pray that we'll always have that. We pray for our schools and and our teachers, they're just uh, all these people, Lord, that are uh, responsible for making decisions. We pray for our church here and the little churches in this town, Lord, as we grow and try to witness to others. We thank you for the miracle of the um, event that we had last yes. Saturday, Lord. Uh, we realized how much you were involved in that and, and the actual miracle that we got to see so many people here. We're just thankful for that and the seeds that were planted. So we pray for our church service today, Lord, as well, and that we would get something personal from the message today. And it's been enjoyable singing together and praising you uh, all day long. And we just pray for that, that this service continues and our service tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we're happy that you're here with us today. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have anybody to meet you. <laughs> so what would we do about that? <clears throat> Life in the sun. Well, you got to experience a little bit of sun, a different kind of sun this week, and it warmed things up. But talking about life in Jesus. This is the testimony. If we look in, in your Bibles in 1 John chapter 5, <laughs> verses 11 and 12. 1 John, chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. 
It says, this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and we're thankful for that. And this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son in his life, whoever does not have the Son of God, does not have life. Do you have life this morning? Amen. Amen. Life in the Son. There isn't a better time, never has been, to know, as that song said today, we sang blessed assurance, and there's no better time to have the assurance in your life that Jesus is in a relationship with you and, and that you have Jesus Christ in your heart. How can you tell if you have Jesus Christ in your heart or not? Well, he's the one that prompts you to do good things and uh, gets after you. So if you've asked the Lord into your heart, have faith. I saw again this week where I read something that said, if Jesus does something, if you accept him as your Savior, trust him to be in your heart then. Because he is. He always does his part, doesn't he? Yeah. Let's pray this morning, for, especially for our message today. Our Father, we thank you that because of Jesus that we can be a part of that song that says, I'm a part of the family of God. Thank you, Lord, for loving us and providing us with all we need. Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. Forgive us of our sins that darkens our life. Cleanse us in the joy of our closer relationship. May we be zealous in witnessing and willing to serve. May your name be glorified this morning in all that we do in this worship service. In Christ's name, amen. 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 The words of this song by... Bill Gaither, you're going to recognize this song, confidently express the basis of our Christian hope. And uh, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because we know he's there. All, because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. If we didn't know that, you know, there are people all over that don't know that. Because they haven't experienced the, the relationship with Jesus Christ. And they probably don't know that Jesus lives. It's not a fable, is it, that no, Jesus right. lives. After the spiritual, I guess you could say, high of Resurrection Sunday last week, some might ask, where do we go from here? And sometimes I ask myself that when I start looking for a sermon. You just brought the Easter sermon, and we have Easter Sunday uh, done and over with, with it for another year. But you know what? It's not just for one Sunday. Jesus lives the entire year. And we can celebrate that the entire year. Amen. But sometimes, and I remember thinking this, where, where do we go from here? And, uh, after New Year's, after Christmas, we have New Year's and we begin a new year. So there's things that we can say, well, we're going to plan this, we're going to plan that, we'll look forward to a new year. I'm going to do better this year than I did last year. I hope I'll make, I make a, a better commitment towards Jesus Christ in this new year. All right, so we've made it all the way to Easter. We're past Easter. Where do we go from here? Because Christ lived, we can be sure of several truths that change our lives in a daily experience worth living. The key word in John's first letter is know. K-N-O-W. The word is found, that word is found 30 times in 105 verses. John was certain of the gifts that came with Christ. One of these gifts is life in the Son. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in the Son, verse 11 of chapter 5. You can be assured that if you seek Him, that He is going to give us life. He's going to give us good things. Yeah. We don't have to question it. If you want to get your songbook out and go back through and read about that song, Blessed Assurance, it's one of the songs that, that talks about the fact that we can be sure. Does God want us to know? Yes. Does He want His children to know? Yes. He does. He doesn't want us to be down here guessing whether we have 
Jesus Christ in our heart and, and that he's done the work or not, and if especially are we going to go to heaven or not. And we don't have to sit here biting our nails and wonder whether if the Lord came or the world ended, where would we go? Mm -hmm. We can know that for a fact. Amen. People out there in the world would say, well, you can't know. Nobody knows but the Lord. Oh, yeah? Well, because I know that he tells us enough, and he has said in his word that we can know. That's right. First of all, God gives life, doesn't he? Life in the Son. How did he do that? It is not God's will for anyone to perish. Right. He wants each person to live. But we can, we can find fulfillment only in Jesus who said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live. Even though they die here on earth, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Have you ever talk, took that sentence, that statement, and thought about it? Even though we would die, our body dies here on earth, but yet we immediately go to heaven and we begin living life eternally, we will never actually die. Praise God. Praise God for that. John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. Jesus' resurrection assures us of life. When we... When last week, when we, we looked at the death of Jesus on the cross, that, that, that wasn't the end, folks. No. That was just the beginning mm -hmm. when he died for our salvation, right. his blood shed on the cross. Also, uh, there was a tomb, and he arose on that Sunday, and he was risen from the dead. And because Jesus was risen, then we will rise as well Amen. when it is time. No resurrection spirit can give us victory over death. Paul asked, where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord, Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 55 and 57. A guy named Lofton Hudson wrote that death for many, if not most modern Western men and women, is, is actually the way they think about it today, a kind of a four-letter word. It's obscene, it's vulgar, nasty, not to be used on stage or in, in a polite society. That, in other words, they don't really like to talk about it. They just assume brush it off and not talk about what's going to happen. Jesus' death and resurrection have changed the face of death need not be the grim reaper, but the doorway to eternal life in the Son. The Christian has hope of a future. When we die here on earth, it's not the end. We're just beginning in the real life. New quality of life is second. The life God gives us in Jesus is more than living forever. He imparts a new quality of life. The word eternal life refer to the very life of God at work within us now. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Sometimes we check around, you know, after a while we're like, you know, I wonder if, if this is where I'm going to live my whole life or if I want to move somewhere else and maybe I'll have a better life there, you know. Maybe things aren't going as well as they should be or maybe you've done it so long that you want to try something else. Moving around here in the different states or different cities within a state sometimes changes things. Sometimes it changes it for better. Sometimes it doesn't. Just depends on what uh, happens in your life. But for the most part, you could go anywhere in the world and still have Jesus Christ as your Savior. That is the difference right. between a quality life and not quality life. The, word, the words eternal life refer to the very life of God at work within us now, today. The words, uh, Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. John 10, 10. That's an easy one to remember because it's 10, 10. An extraordinary quality of life is available to everyone in Jesus Christ. But those without Jesus are dead in trespasses and sins. Jesus promised 
Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death into life. Life in the Son is more than just living. It, it is life with quality. Um, how many of you living here in this world? I, I, have a, I, I have to tell you, it seems to me like a few years ago. Maybe it was, maybe it was 25 years ago. And they said that we needed to start as a country or as a world, that we needed to start making things that are more quality and, and not throwing them away. We have become, actually, we've become the opposite. We've become a throwaway society. Do you remember, guys, when you used to go get a lawnmower, a push lawnmower, that was made, it wasn't made out of a stamped out deck. No. We're a process of, of taking that mower and just bang on like that, and now you've got this mower. Well, it used to be that those were kind of a solid piece of steel, either maybe kind of a casting of aluminum of some kind, and they were made to last a few years. Have you noticed? Now, that's just one example. Everything has become toss it out. And they started to say uh, for everyone that we're going to have to start washing our dishes and keeping them and eating off the same thing instead of getting paper plates and plastic. What are we doing? Eating off paper plates. And we're, we're I mean, you go get a, I, I think it's kind of hard. You go get a lawnmower and the, the gears in it, uh, riding mowers, are, they're, they're plastic. Did, I'll tell you what, if, at one time I tore the gearbox apart on, on one of those mowers and I thought, this thing, I'm surprised it even made it two days. You know, you got these plastic gears in there that just break a tooth off and you're done. And then it says in the instructions there, if something happens to your lawnmower or your piece of uh, machinery that you bought, don't take it back to Home Depot because they don't deal yeah. with it. You get, you got to find the actual manufacturers over in Tahiti, you know, and take them over and over there because you can't ship it. You got to take it over there and tell them that something broke, and they just all you got to do is say, "Well, your warranty's off in three days anyway, mm -hmm. and so we'll give you a day. Here's fifty cents. That's what you get." And and, and we've become this throwaway society, which is the opposite of what we talked about as a nation doing. <laughs> Do you realize that when you have Jesus Christ in your life, the quality of life is much better than that? When you're talking about quality in life here, I'm, I'm wondering how we even can have any quality of life. You can't unless you have Jesus. The second thing that I want to look at, too, is do you have life? Received through faith. The gift of life comes to those who have the Son. And the Son must be received through what? Faith. What's the name of our church? Faith. Hey. <laughs> Wondered where that name came from? We are a people that have faith. Amen. We believe in Jesus Christ. We yes. believe in God. We believe He can perform miracles, and He does. He shows us. He has been so graceful to do that, to show us, because, you know, we're just human, and we, once in a while... If we prayed for things to happen once in a while, we like to see them happen, don't we? And, and God does it for us just uh, because that's what he wants to do and he wants to show his children that he does answer our prayers. The gift of life comes to those who have the Son and it must be received through faith. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5.13 Faith was the essential element to which Jesus responded. You remember the story where the four men, now obviously they were pretty good believers, they had faith, and they brought the paralytic, and, and Jesus is teaching in, in, in a house, and it's, it's crowded around there, and they come, they, they said to this guy, they said, I'll tell you what we'll do, we've heard of a man that actually could heal you, we're going to have faith to believe that he can. So we're going to carry you over to this house and we're going to see if we can get... They, have you ever pulled up to a restaurant or you pulled up to a, a football game or something like that and you're like, uh-oh, 
we're in trouble. There's people coming out all the doors and they're lined up, they're standing in line. You see that? I go to a I go to a McDonald's and they're lined up for a mile <laughs> trying to get in there to get their fries. <laughs> Makes you wonder why. Ice tea is the best. That's why. That's the ice tea. It's, it's the best. Well they they started getting up to this house and they realized Man, I can't believe there's this many people. How are we going to get this guy in there so Jesus can even see him? So you know what they did? They, you remember the story? They, yeah. they, they got their ladder off the truck. It was <laughs> up on top of their van. You know, they pulled it all down, and that's quite a job sometimes because it's up overhead. They went up there, and I've always wondered this, because if I was up here preaching and I saw this little keyhole saw <laughs> cutting, cutting a hole in the ceiling, and I was Jesus, I'd be, what? You know, these guys, are, so they, they actually made a hole in the roof and they lowered him down in front of Jesus and they asked, and, and they asked if, if, they, if Jesus could heal him. When Jesus saw their faith, they had enough faith to realize that they That's needed right. to get this man there and they went to the trouble of going up on the roof I don't know if they were certain teed shingles or what kind they were, but they, they pulled him back and they let the man down through there. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Mark 2, 5. What, what did he say that for? Why didn't he reach out and touch and heal him? He did heal him. What did he start with? The most important thing. His salvation. The Lord healed him, but, but that's beside the point. He really needed the healing of having salvation of God healed him. Jesus healed him that day. He said, son, your sins are forgiven. Just like that. Faith is a common ingredient in daily existence, yet many claim, they, a lot of people would say, oh, you can't have faith in Christ. This guy's name was Aldi Huxley once wrote, theology claims that just uh, shall live by, the just shall live by faith. Science says the just shall live by verification. Yet the scientist believes in a logical universe. He believes in principles used to ver verify presumptions. What is a theory? It is something believed to be true but unproven. We believe in education. We believe in democracy. We believe in ourselves. Belief is, is, believe it or not, is, is co pretty common. Well, then why not believe the best and have life in the sun? Amen. We believe in a lot of things that are far more fetched than right. what Jesus Christ is. That's right. It is not a fable. Lost because of unbelief. If this uncommon life comes to those who believe in Jesus, those who refuse to believe are lost. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Can a good person really be lost? Yes. Can a churchgoer be lost? Yes. Can the lovable, generous neighbor who has simply delayed her commitment to Christ be lost? Yes. <coughs> Faith in Christ is the crucial test. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they've not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. John 3, 18. Brethren, see poor sinners round you, slumbering on the brink of woe. Death is coming. Hell is moving. Can you bear to let them go? Tell them all about the Savior. Tell them that he will be found. George Atkins. Realizing that life is only in the sun should motivate us to rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. That song is in the back of our book. In the missions section. The third thing. Life for keeps. Trust God's testimony. 
Maybe as a child you responded to a person's gift by saying, is this mine for keeps? <clears throat> Life in the sun is a permanent possession. God is the basis of this security. A personal testimony about new life is great. God's testimony is greater. Yes. Whoever believes in the Son of God accepts this testimony. To doubt the certainty of life on the basis of requirements set forth by God is to make God a liar. If you have done what God said to do, then trust his word and rejoice. The Lord can save us, and he can also keep us, keep the devil or anybody else from snatching us out of his hand. Amen. That's right. yeah. All we have to do is follow him. Amen. God keeps us. Paul's confident word to Timothy included a testimony of God's keeping power. Have you ever tried to go against what? Have you ever tried to go against what uh, the Holy Spirit's telling you? Miserable, isn't it? <laughs> if you believe you're doing what the Lord's calling is in your life, you'll be fine. It's when uh, the Lord calls you to do something or, or says, this is what I would have you do, this is the church where I would have you go, and you refuse to do it. Yes, we can turn away from God. We can say, absolutely. And I had experienced this with a man in my life who said, uh, he called me and he said he, he was uh, had to get his ducks in a row. That he was going to, he was, they were sure he wasn't going to make it through. And he, it, this is the difference. He said, don't come down here and try to talk me into it. He knew I was going to come down and try to talk him into giving his heart to the Lord. And so he told me flat out, don't be trying to come down here and talk me into it. That's the kind of talk that will that refuses to be saved. And he said it. So I don't believe that he made it to heaven. I don't. I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. 2 Timothy 1.12 When we make the decision to follow him and ask him into our heart, I have every reason to believe that he will help me to keep that to a hundred percent and won't let me go. The word keep means guard. That means that he will guard and he evokes the image of a garrison of heavenly troops protecting the individual. God's army will protect us and keep us. We may have to go through, the, through some, some really terrible things here on earth, but as long as we keep believing and have faith in him, Guess where we're going to go? We're going to go to heaven with him. Amen. Christ is able to keep us and present us one day at the throne of glory. He will be our advocate when we go to, to before God, won't he? Yes, amen. Because he was able to defeat death. He is adequate for everything in this life and the next. I share the sense of mystery about which Daniel... Whittle wrote, and this is just a few words from that great song, I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known. I don't really know why he did it, but he did. Nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own. And each one of us can, think, can say that. Say, read the words of that song. I don't know why he did it, but he did it for me. I do not, I, I do know I believe Christ. Life in the Son is real. Life is worth the living because he lives. Remember that song that we started with, that Gaither song? We can be thankful that, there, that God created men and women like Bill Gaither who has miraculously, along with many other songwriters, did you notice that when you go into a book and you read the story of some of the hymns and the writers of, of the hymns that we have that we get to sing, that a lot of times it will say something to do with the, the author that has written over 250 songs. 
in their life. What an inspiration. A lot of them are that way. And a lot of times, songwriters write about their experiences as well in these songs. And the Christian writers have written songs that keep on preaching. Boy, I tell you, that is great. They keep on preaching sermons year after year after year. Some of them were written way back in the 1700s, 1800s. Can you imagine the seeds that were planted by these messages from those Praise people? God. Praise God for that. Amen. One day, all of us, as we go to heaven, will get to meet them face to face, talk about. If you think that you don't have anything to do, you're going to get to talk to somebody like Fanny Crosby and ask her how, what inspired her to write yeah. the songs that she wrote. Uh -huh. George Bernard and the old rugged cross and, and things like that. There, there's lots of things to do. And you know what? For all you guys, there won't be any building inspectors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord for it. Not anybody here a building inspector? <laughs> My wife. <laughs> oh. She's a fence inspector. Oh, that's right. <laughs> all right, well, listen, let's stand together and close. You always have the opportunity to come and pray and ask the Lord into your heart. Do you know that our altar is open and you can come and pray at the end of the service or any time right in the middle of the service if you need to, and we'll introduce you to Jesus Christ. Let's close this morning. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the message today. Yes, it was, it was, it's a simple thing, but I, I wanted to be clear that as we decide in faith to follow Jesus Christ as our Savior and invite you into our heart, Lord, that, that we can know that it happens and that you do the work and that you come into our heart to change our life and live in, in us and be the one that guards over us and all the troops of heaven, the garrison of the heavenly troops can oversee us and watch over us and protect us from the devil and from Satan and from Antichrist or whoever you want to say, Lord, but um, in this world we need you to survive and to have a life in the full. So we ask, Lord, this morning, if there be one here that needs to make a commitment for the first time, or maybe we need to renew our commitment, we just ask that now would be the time. Don't put it off, because you never know when your life would be taken or the Lord returns to take us all to heaven, and we sure don't want to miss that day. So we just ask right now, in this quietness of this moment, that we would say that in our own mind uh, to you, Lord, that we're going to make a new commitment to you or we want you to come into our heart. And this can be a changing day for our lives. We can have that assurance and have everything taken care of and we don't need to carry a burden on our shoulders that makes us question whether you're there or not. We give you praise this morning. We thank you for all that you've done for us. Watch over our people and give them a blessing today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat>